not been crucified. So the old man continues to want to sin. See? That's why. Okay? Immersion baptism is necessary to put the old self in all, with all of its inclinations, habits, etc., sins, in the death work of the cross. So if that has not occurred, if the old man has not been put in the death work of the cross, okay, then there are no changes in the person's soul life. His mind thinks the same as it did 10, 15 years ago about the things of God, about wanting to sin, etc., etc. Okay? And what does that mean? There's no changes in his soul. Does that mean he's not saved? No. Why? Because salvation is a free gift. It is not earned or deserved. And being a free gift, uh, the person's uh, salvation is assured. However, what it does mean is the soul is not sanctified. Or it is not yet sanctified. That's what it means. So they're saved, but not sanctified. You see, is that a problem? Yes. It is. Why? Because Hebrews says, without holiness, no man will see God. Now, holiness and sanctification are the same word in the Bible. They mean the same thing. Holiness is sanctification. Sanctification is holiness. Okay? So, if a person is saved but not sanctified, it shows in their behavior. See? It shows in their behavior. Okay? So, those who do not receive water baptism over time are not changed in their soul life. That's the proof that there is something supernatural going on in immersion baptism under the water. Because when that old man is truly put in the death work of the cross, guess what? Their soul life, their mind, their attitudes change. They start showing the fruit of the Spirit as applied to the soul man. You see? So the only answer, if someone's soul is unchanged over time after they have gotten born again, the only answer as to why is because of the fact that the flesh part of the soul man, okay, has not been put in the death work of the cross. Now, y'all know the definition of the flesh. The flesh is not this stuff. Okay? This stuff is in the Greek of the New Testament, the word soma. Okay? S-O-M-A. The flesh is the Greek word sarx, S-A-R-X. So the Holy Spirit distinguishes between the two. A lot of people think that when we talk about sins of the flesh, we're talking about sinning with our body. Not necessarily. Flesh, by definition, is a lifestyle of thinking that agrees with sin. A lifestyle of thinking that agrees with sin. That's what the flesh is. That's what the old man is. That's what hasn't been put in the death work of the cross. And as a result, people think the same after water baptism or without water baptism, and their lives never change. And they wonder what's going on. And the real problem is that they have not appropriated by faith or understood the purpose of water baptism and taken possession of it. Say, when change occurs, it implies that an act of the Holy Spirit occurs at the time of the immersion, 
entering into Christ's death and burial with Him. It is not symbolic, but actual. Just as baptism in the Holy Spirit is not symbolic, but actual. When you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, you receive something. Nine gifts of the Spirit, which operate as the Spirit wills. 1 Corinthians 12.11 says. Notice that that is an impartation. When the Holy Spirit meets us under the water in immersion baptism, okay? This is not symbolic. It also is actual. And there is an impartation of resurrection life to our spirit man that we may come up in newness of life. Now, this means in turn that water baptism by immersion is not symbolic, it is actual, it produces the fruit which is a transformation that is a commencement of the salvation of the soul man. A real important concept to understand. Why? Because the act of immersion baptism is a submission of the soul man to the authority of Christ. Why do I say that? Because it says we enter into His death with Him in immersion baptism. So we are we have submitted our spirit man when we got born again. Hmm? And of course we submit our total body when we get born again. I know that. Okay? But the testimony of it that we submit our soul man as well as our body is the act of faith. Immersion baptism. And when that happens, there is an impartation. It is actual also. Actual. These are supernatural experiences without which you cannot see change in your soul man. And so when we see that we have no change in our soul life, over time, we're the same people struggling with the same sins over and over and over and over again. Okay? Then we realize that we need to be water baptized by immersion again. Because the flesh remains alive and uncrucified. That's the problem. See, the old man likes to get down from the cross. Doesn't like to stay up on the cross. See? So, we have to walk our faith walk all of our lives with a hammer and nails in our back pocket. Okay? To be ready for the old man when he wants to come down off the cross so that we can nail him back up. Amen. See? Jesus had the right idea when he picked carpentry as an occupation, didn't he? <laughs> okay, we've all got to be carpenters who carry around nails and hammer. <laughs> all right, for a spiritual purpose. All right, now watch. Because the flesh remains alive and uncrucified. if we do not receive the death work of the cross. For that reason, Paul and Acts rebaptized people for their lack of understanding. Yes, he did. In fact, I myself have been baptized and rebaptized four times because I found out a little more about baptism as I went along as the years passed and I wanted to take possession of that particular aspect that water baptism offered. And I hadn't before. So Paul rebaptized uh, for people's lack of understanding. Okay? Now, here's a very interesting question. 
that we should all ask ourselves. Why would Paul do this unless he expected a result? Hmm? Why would Paul rebaptize if it's only symbolic and they've done it once? If it's only a testimony to men and nothing else, that you're now a Christian. Why would he baptize again? But he did. And the reason is because he expected a result. Huh? That would be the only reason to keep rebaptizing, wouldn't it? And I know this in my own rebaptisms. Okay, the things that I went down under the water for to appropriate, I got. To take possession of, I got. So there was a change. That means there's an impartation of the Spirit, an encounter of the Spirit. Notice, there is an encounter of the Spirit in water baptism by immersion. There's an encounter of the Spirit in Holy Spirit baptism and the receiving of the gifts. But it's the same Spirit. And it is the Spirit of Christ. And so now we understand why the Scripture says there is one baptism in Christ. That baptism has two works to it. Immersion baptism effects the salvation or the commencement of the salvation of the soul man. And spirit baptism empowers the spirit man to walk the walk of faith and brings us into community with the true body of Christ. But it's all one spirit that does it. And so the scripture says there is one baptism and it's in Christ. Now, When there's no change, that demonstrates that just as the Spirit baptism is an impartation of the Spirit manifested through the operation of the gifts of the Spirit, water baptism too is an impartation of the death work upon the soul man and raised.